Respiration. This is the process by which food substances are chemically broken down by enzymes in living cells to provide energy. It is a chemical process in which food molecules are enzymatically broken down to release energy. Respiration is quite different from gases exchange. Because in the sense that gases exchange is purely a physical process that involves diffusion. Respiration is a chemical reaction that takes place in living cells. Now, during respiration, carbon dioxide, water, and either alcohol or lactic acid are formed. It's carbon dioxide, water, alcohol, and either uh, that is uh, either alcohol or lactic acid are formed. That is in addition to the release of energy. Though the main product of respiration is energy. Then in addition to that, carbon dioxide will be released, water will be released, and either alcohol or lactic acid. Now you said that respiration is an enzyme controlled reaction. Now enzymes play such an important role in the process that without them, this reaction cannot proceed. So we look at the roles played by these enzymes in respiration. Number one, they control the many steps that are involved in this process. Respiration is not a one-step reaction. There's, it's a series of reactions and each step is controlled by a particular enzyme. So the enzymes control all these many steps so that the process occurs in an orderly manner. Secondly, the enzymes slow down the oxidation reactions so that energy is produced continuously and in small quantities without damaging the cell. You see the difference between respiration and combustion is the rate at which energy is released. In combustion, energy in the form of heat is released rapidly. But in respiration, this energy is released in small quantities and continuously. And it is the enzymes that ensure this takes place by slowing down the oxidation process. Now, since this process of respiration occurs inside living cells, this process is also referred to as cellular or tissue or even internal respiration. This is to distinguish it from combustion, which is sometimes referred to as the external respiration. So the respiration that we're talking about here is that process that involves the release of energy in living cells. So specifically, you're talking about cellular or tissue respiration. Now, what is the significance of respiration? Energy is locked in chemical bonds of food substances, for example, glucose. So in the chemical bonds of food substances, such as glucose, there's a lot of energy that is locked in. This glucose, when we look at, we look at the structural formula, this is how the glucose is structured. There are many chemical bonds that contain energy. All these chemical bonds are energy rich. So during respiration, these chemical bonds are broken down and energy is released to be utilized by organisms. The examples of food substances that produce large quantities of energy when broken down, 
and these include carbohydrates. When carbohydrates are digested, the final product is glucose. When glucose is oxidized, then a lot of energy is released. Even lipids do contain a lot of energy, and when they are broken down chemically in living cells, they yield a lot of energy. So it is this glucose that is oxidized to release energy. When the chemical bonds are broken, and then the other products be water and carbon dioxide. Water and carbon dioxide are the other products, but energy is yielded from the breaking down of these bonds. Now, once this energy is released, it is put to various uses in living organisms. For example, in animals, the energy is used in muscular contraction that produce movement. These movements enable human beings, for example, to do work, like working in the shamba, planting, harvesting, so on. All sorts of work require muscular contraction, and muscular contraction uses energy from respiration. Another use is conduction of nerve impulse. It's not even visible, but it's very important. Communication within the body from one part of the body to the other is in the form of impulse. So, for example, receptors in the skin around the neck will detect say the stimulus of touch or pressure and then they generate an impulse that is trans that is conveyed through the nervous system to for example the muscles so if it is something that was itchy around the neck the information in the form of nerve impulse is transmitted to the through the nervous system and then to the muscle in the arm then you bend your contract these muscles to scratch or remove whatever stimulus it is that was causing that sensation. So the transmission and conduction of nerve impulse within the nervous system requires energy. And there are many processes that depend on this nerve impulse conduction. Another use is in pumping of the blood by the heart. The heart continuously contract the muscles of the heart, that is, continuously contract and pump blood. This blood carries nutrients from the site of absorption, oxygen from the site of absorption also in the lungs to various parts of the body. And then they also carry waste products from the various parts of the body to the organs of excretion. The force with which they, the blood moves or flows is produced by the pumping action, the heartbeat of the heart. And this, of course, consumes energy produced from respiration. Breathing is another important process that consumes energy. Movement of the ribcage up and out to bring about inhalation is an energy consuming process. In plants, the two main processes that consume energy are one, translocation. In translocation, food produced from photosynthetic cells either in the leaves or any other part with photosynthetic tissues is translocated through the phloem to the other parts of the plant, for example, the roots where the food substance is stored. So translocation of products of photosynthesis along the uh, phloem consumes energy. And this energy is derived from respiration. Even absorption of certain minerals. You have selective absorption of minerals by the roots. In the soil, you have different types of mineral salts, but the plants only require specific type. So, in the root, using 
active transport, specific minerals will be allowed to pass through, while others will be screened out and prevented from passing through by active transport. So this selective absorption of mineral salts by the roots is an energy consuming process and this energy is obtained from the process of respiration.